good afternoon everyone and welcome to the first in the series of webinars we are going to start with our webinar thank you so much before we start i'd like to thank all of you for taking the time out and joining us today and we really hope that you find these series of webinars useful we have we've planned a very good set of webinars for you through the week monday to friday and every day we see you at the same time 3 to 4 uh we'll start off with our first session today tips to improve your spoken english uh today is the 14th of december 2020 and i am your presenter for the session i'll be taking you through the session my name is priya ayer i work as the academic manager for the school's english and skills team uh i take care of uh, large scale teacher development projects in the east and northeast of india primarily uh but my role generally involves uh working on teacher development projects across the country given that we are all working online now so uh you know the uh, boundaries are no longer a barrier lovely to see all of you and meet meet all um am i audible to all of you uh, anu haima could you please confirm if i'm audible and if you can see me and hear me fine because it's raining in bombay and i have some network issues that's why i'm checking yes we can hear you and we can see you all okay, okay. thank you uh so before we start the session here are a quick list of uh, our session objectives or an overview of our session so we'll be looking at various aspects of speaking today uh, and i've divided this into two parts as you can see understanding speaking and practicing speaking so it's really important for us first to understand the aspects of speaking and then look at how uh, what are the activities that we can participate in or we can do on a daily basis to practice speaking and to improve our self confidence uh so we'll be looking at some speaking strategies today pronunciation contextual appropriacy and differences between written and spoken english uh and in the practicing speaking session we'll be looking at uh, activities to raise awareness and improve confidence and fluency so the first part of today's session will be about understanding speaking and um if you can while i'm just waiting for the slide to load if you can uh, quickly share in the chat box maybe do you think there are different styles to how we speak in different situations do you agree with this or do you think that we speak the same way in all the in all situations what are your thoughts nothing on the chat yet uh, priya oh, no uh, no issues so. maybe there's a time lag here yeah i'm just waiting for the slide to load haima i've already moved slides i'm just waiting for it to come up it is it is on um, understanding speaking just yeah yeah i'm i'm waiting for it to go to the next one next different slide. english at different times sure can you see the fourth slide yet yes we can so sure. so uh, like i asked you in the uh, in the previous slide we change the way we speak depending on the situation that we are in right so sometimes we are very formal we are very you know to the point very specific our language is different and sometimes we are very chilled out very informal we are at ease there are different and in in the classroom as teachers we are a very different uh, person i mean we speak very differently so uh, if you can see three pictures on your slide uh, can you tell me or can you use the chat again very quickly and tell us what are these situations what what three situations can you see what is this picture all about where you can see four people seated and probably chatting with each other
Uh, do we have anything in the chat, Haima? Not yet, not yet. OK. Uh, there could be a time lag, OK? So please feel, feel free to keep your answers going, uh, coming in. We'd love to see your responses. Uh, if we're not able to address or uh, acknowledge your responses immediately, we will re refer to them during the course of the session. So please don't feel ignored or neglected. We will look at all your comments. Yeah, there's one. So, uh, uh, there's one sure. comment which says attendance in the classroom or something like that, probably. Mm -hmm. And then okay, maybe they're referring to this picture. Yeah. And something in Canada, which OK, which yeah. I, I unfortunately I don't. OK, I, uh, I can't read I think Canada. The, one, the one in Canada says um, um, uh, your voice is not clear. Oh, any better yeah, now? So maybe. Yeah, or maybe there's an issue with the Internet on the other side. Could be, could be. Okay, yeah. okay. I'll I'll try and speak uh, slowly and clearly going yeah. forward. Sure. So there is one answer which says uh, there are three situations. One is the friend circle. The second one is Lovely. a classroom context, and the third one is a telephone conversation. Absolutely, bingo. Uh, so the yes, the first one is friends chatting with each other. The second maybe talking in the work break or something. It could be they've taken a break. The second one is uh, they're talking to each other in a classroom. There are students doing some activity possibly. The teacher is probably explaining something and they're all all attention, all eyes for the teacher. And the third one is uh, looks like a very formal situation where there's a person speaking on the phone. Could be a call center, could be a normal office where uh, the lady is having a conversation over the phone, but it looks more like a formal context as compared to picture number one. So it's very obvious from these three pictures that the language that would be used in all the three situations is going to be quite different to each other, right? You won't use the same spoken English or the spoken language in all the situations. It's going to be different in each situation. In with friends, like I said, you're going to be informal. You're going to talk over one another. You're not going to wait for somebody to complete their turn and then, you know, politely say, I don't agree with you. You're just going to stop the person midway and jump into the conversation like we do with friends all the time. Uh, you know, whereas in the, sec the, the third situation, you're going to be friendly. You're going to be polite, but you're going to be very clear. You're going to use specific language. You're, if you're talking to your boss, you're going to be even more polite. So there are different ways we uh, restructure our language or we use the choice of words in the language, any language. It could be Kannada, it could be Tamil, it could be English. In any language that you speak, depending on the context of the situation, in a classroom, you're going to use graded language, which is language at the right level for your students. You're not going to speak to a seventh standard class with uh, you know talking about literature and Shakespeare in quotes and kind of speak a lang speak language at the level which probably you would be speaking to your peers going to use lower language which is appropriate to the level of your students You're going to use more instructional language uh, open your books, sit down, stand up, do this activity, go to page number so and so. But you're still going to maintain that friendliness in the language. You're not going to be authority. You're, and there, per perhaps in the classroom is when you use a whole set of uh, body language and gestures to communicate more effectively. Uh, so I have a question for you. Is written English the same as spoken English? Do you think that's the case? Is it going to be the same as spoken English or is it different? Compare written English and spoken English. If you can give us a couple of points in the chat, it will be great. How is it? Is it same? Is it, the, is it different? If, if it is different, what is different?
So is written in English the same as spoken English? Do we have any responses yet? Uh, no, Priya, nothing. Nothing. No worries. Well. We can. We can uh, allow them time to come back, but I can go on so that we don't uh, waste time here. Uh, so written English differs from spoken English. Obviously, it is much closer to informal writing. So when we write informally to a friend or to a fam family member, we might use some aspects of written, uh, written English or spoken English in that case. Uh, it is very close to informal written English, but it still has differences. Uh, so, Priya, so what about uh, I'm giving? Yeah. Yes, yes, Anu. There are some responses. Um, I mean, uh, that have come in. Um, some of them are saying not different. Uh, um, okay. Some are saying both are different. Um, okay. Uh, I, I don't have the names because it's coming as anonymous. No, no so, issue. No issue. Yeah, Niranjan. Saying uh, different. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So, uh, so, and uh, Raju is saying no difference. So yeah, these are few of the responses. Okay. 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 So hopefully the ones who are saying that it's not different find out what the differences are and will agree that it is slightly different after this slide is done. And the ones who are saying uh, it is different, yes, I agree with spoken English and written English are different in the sense spoken English. So when I say using more specific language, would you use more specific language in written English or spoken English? Obviously written English, right? You would use more specific language in written English because with spoken English you have the op uh, option of going back and correcting yourself immediately. If suppose I've said something now and I realize the minute I say it that it's wrong. I say, oh, I'm sorry and I can correct it. So I can still use that informality in the language. It's more of a communication. Whereas in written English, you are writing something down. You don't have immediate feedback. In spoken English, the minute I say something, I look at the face of the person. I look at the body language of the person that, OK, something's not fine here. I need to change the way I'm saying it. There's immediate feedback. Uh, spoken English has vaguer language. It's not very clear. It's uh, it's not very specific. It's not very uh, formal, formal, so to say. You know, and it uses more verbs. It uses a lot of discourse markers. What are discourse markers? You know, when I want to express interest in something, when I'm somebody saying something, when you imagine a conversation you're having with your colleague. You and your colleague uh, in a staff room in your uh, class in your school and you're speaking to each other. The colleague is narrating something really interesting. So would you just sit like this like a stone and just listen to what your colleague is saying or would you bend forward sometimes and say, oh really that's very interesting. Yeah, you keep saying hmm, you nod your head. So these are all features of written English. These are not features of uh, sorry, these are sorry. These are features of spoken English and not features of written English, right? Uh, whereas in written English, you use longer sentences, you know, to uh, and you could use clauses, you could use punctuations. Spoken English is again you use punctuations, but it's not evident to the speaker. So these are the differences in written and spoken English. Of course, the script is the same. You're saying the same thing. It's the same English. But the way you say it is different. There are your answers. I'm going to quickly show, take you through these so that you have these ready for you. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so I'll give you about 20, 30 seconds. You can have a quick look through spoken English features and written English features. OK. So we've looked at we've tried to understand how speak. I mean what speaking is, what are the some of the aspects of speaking. 
we're going to look at some of the strategies for speaking. Like we discussed right at the beginning of this call uh, webinar, social and professional context, the way you speak will be decided by the context that you are in. If you're going to be at home and you're speaking to someone, you won't be as formal as you would be when you're speaking in your school to a principal or to somebody in in your work uh, environment. It'll, it'll obviously be different the way you speak, the words that you choose. What else is going to? So you need to be familiar with the context. You need to ask questions. You need to re rephrase what you're saying. So suppose you've said something and you get that blank look from your listener or from your students in our context. You need to rephrase the way you've said the same thing so that the message is clear across the room. You need to paraphrase things. And you don't need most important. I keep saying this to everybody I meet, not worrying about mistakes. It's OK to make mistakes. It's natural. We're all here to learn. Only if you make a mistake, somebody will correct you. And that's how learning happens, right? And in the classroom, how can you? What are your strategies for speaking? The most important thing uh, we keep saying to teachers is script your instructions. So whenever you're going to go into a lesson, whenever you before you're going to go into a classroom, now it's all online. But even then, plan your lesson. Think about it ahead of time. Write down all your instructions. When you do that, what happens is you're actually seeing it in play in front of your eyes. You can see if your learners are going to understand it. You can see the gaps in your instructions and then there and then you can correct your instructions before you go and mess it up in the classroom. So it's better to be every time you go into before you go into your classroom, make sure you script down your instructions. You've written down what you're going to say. You kind of envision how it's all going to pan out in your class. What are your students going to be able to? Are, are your students going to be able to understand what you're saying? If not, you know, kind of bring it down, bring the level of your instructions down. Rehearse stories you will tell. So as a teacher, I used to do this a lot in the past. Uh, every time I know that there's a good, there's going to be a storytelling lesson in my classroom, I used to uh, rehearse my stories. I used to stand in front of a mirror or get a, a younger sister or a child in the house to kind of be my subject and practice my stories, animate, use a lot of gestures and make it very lively for my students. That way I was very well prepared when I went into my classroom to conduct that lesson. So very important rehearse. Uh, and I also spoke about pronunciation, which is another key aspect or a strategy for speaking. You need to focus on your pronunciation. Uh, uh, I was talking to uh, one of my colleagues that there could be a, an, an entire session on pronunciation actually. Uh, it could be a two hour webinar easily. Uh, so the key we are just touching upon the key aspects here. We're not going to go into the details of pronunciation. So we have connected speech and we have intonation and rhythm. So the key aspects for speaking would one of them is connected speech in any language, any language that you speak. When you when you're a fluent speaker of, of the language, you notice that you tend to mix words up in the sense you connect words when you're speaking in the flow. You know they say when you're very fluent, you uh, the end of one word and the beginning of the next word is kind of merged. That is exactly in the simplest language, simplest terms what connected speech actually means. So when you get to that level of mastery in any language, that's when that comes naturally to you. There are schwa sounds, there are weak sounding words, there are voiced syllables, there are unvoiced syllables, there is a consonant to vowel linking, there's a vowel to vowel linking and intonation and rhythm of course. You know when you want to uh, emphasize on a particular word in a sentence, you use word stress. When you want to emphasize on a sentence, you use sentence stress. Then you have rising and falling intonations every time when you're speaking. How do you put across a question? How does the person opposite know that it is a question and not a statement? 
that's because of the intonation. There's a rising intonation. There's a falling intonation. It's because of that that the uh, listener understands whether you're asking a question or whether you're making a statement. We're moving on to part two now, which is on building awareness. So I'm sure many of you use a lot of uh, so resources, sources to listen to English. Could you please quickly use the chat box and write down a couple of resources that you listen to any source? It could be television, it could be a web series, it could be news, it could be anything. It could be a mobile application that you listen to on a regular basis. Could you quickly write down one or two sources of English that you listen to? We're only specifically looking at listening sources. Remember, not reading or any other sources. I hope I'm still audible. Yes, you are. OK, OK. Priya, can you repeat the question again, Priya? So sure. any yeah. any sources of English that teachers listen to what sources of English do you listen to? Do you listen to the news regularly? Do you listen to podcasts? Do you listen to uh, some expert speakers on YouTube? Or do you listen to a particular so, uh, yeah, person? Okay. Some interesting. Uh, some somebody's written Google Assistant. Um, ah, <laughs> listen yeah. to Google Assistant quite a lot. News channels, of course. Uh, television. Uh, there's quite a lot on TV. Uh, mobile and internet. Yeah. So I guess general content. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's about it. Lovely, lovely. Yeah. So this is exactly what we have here for you as well. So there's YouTube, which is which got a plethora, like lots and lots of options there. Uh, difficult to choose sometimes what you need to listen to. Uh, these also have some interesting songs which are at the level of your students. This could be used for your students or you, it could be used for yourselves also to improve your own language. There's this TED written on your screen. If you can see the screen, uh, it's TED, TED Talks. Very, very useful resource. Uh, there are expert speakers on almost everything under the sun. It could be humanities, it could be science, it could be fiction, it could be art, it could be language, uh, any you name it and they have speakers for it. And it's a very good way to improve your own uh, language. So the more you listen to something, the more you're exposed to a particular language, the more uh, the research says that you are able to master it. And I think most of us uh, kind of face this issue because we don't have the context to listen to the language and to practice it as much. So TED Talks is very interesting. You can just Google TED TED Talks. It's a it's a website and you need to just log in and uh, it gives you a, a wide range of options. There's the BBC News, of course, uh, which is uh, very, very good, very good language there. BBC Radio for some of you who don't, you know, some of us are uh, prefer listening to things than watching it. So we're better at understanding things when we listen to it. So there's BBC Radio. And then there's, of course, British Council. A lot of resources in the British Council. This is for kids. This is for teenagers. There's some for uh, adult learners of the, of the language. Uh, you could also pick and choose uh, some activities of interest to your students, which uh, is again available on the Learn English Kids website. Uh, don't worry, all this and more is going to be shared with you on Friday when my colleague Rebecca was, will take you through a, a list of resources on Friday in another webinar where uh, you'll actually be able to explore some of these resources. For now, this is the Learn English Kids where you have many options of interesting songs. These are short little songs uh, which focus on language. And there are stories as well, which you could use in your classroom, depending on what you're teaching in the classroom. 
Finally, we come to the third and the most important, if I may say so, uh, segment of the webinar, which is practicing English. So we had a lot of questions around how do you practice on your own? You always need someone to practice, right? Well, not really. You could listen to a lot of authentic English. Like I told you in the previous slide, many, many options where you can go online, uh, register yourself. It's all mostly free of cost and you can listen to a lot, a lot of authentic English. It, you, it could also be news. Every day you uh, sign into a news channel that uh, you could log into TED Talks. Uh, TED Talks also has this option of 108 languages that it uh, gives you subtitles in. So initially when you start off, maybe you're not able to understand the accent of the speaker. Maybe you need the need the subtitles, but gradually you can do away with the subtitles when you become more confident in listening and understanding what the speaker is saying. You when you listen to lots of authentic language, you can notice the aspects of pronunciation. Count the number of words in the short short sentences that you listen to. Notice words that are being pushed together. Notice sounds which don't match spellings. English is full of such words, right? Where you have sounds that don't match spellings. You have the word honest, which is which is spelled as H-O-N-E-S-T, but it is honest. It starts with the O sound. It's not the H sound, right? So many, many more words like that. Uh, repeat and practice saying sentences. You can do this also by your on your own. Uh, you could record yourself, listen to your recording and compare it to the original. So there are many applications, mobile applications, which are available uh, where you can record yourself. Listen to somebody who's speaking the sentence or a short little paragraph. Uh, say repeat it and record yourself. Listen to the recording and compare it to the original. Notice the good things and the things that you have to improve on and this way. You can do all of this on your own. You don't need somebody. If you want, if you if you're somebody who likes to practice with friends and you learn better by sharing it with others, we have a list of activities here for you. You can play games on WhatsApp or other social media. There are classroom instructions games. There is a dialogue build up game. And there's a describe a lesson or a recent experience. So you can decide if you already have a WhatsApp group with, you know, like minded people, other teachers, other peers, you can decide on a time. It doesn't take more than 15 to 20 minutes in a day. Uh, you can decide on a time and you can choose any one of these activities and come on that specified time, agree to meet on WhatsApp or Facebook or any other social media and share your uh, ideas here. So you for classroom instructions, you could pick an activity you and your colleague often do in the classroom. So everybody in that group needs to prepare instructions. You need to record your voices there and put it up on that platform and you can compare. So maybe there is somebody else who's planned minute details of the instructions which you can pick up from. Maybe there's one or two words you've missed which your colleague has kind of got right. So that's how you can develop with a peer with your friend. There's a dialogue build up. One person starts the game by sending a photograph and it could be a photo you've taken or one from the Internet and you could build a conversation around that photo. For example, if you look at this picture of a bird, I am not sure if you can see it on my screen. There are some flowers here and there's a butterfly and there's a bird here. So you could share this picture with your friend. And you could say, you know, the thing I miss the most about being locked down is going outside to enjoy nature. And your friend could say, yes, me too. I love to listen to the chirping of birds and I love walking along the beach and going to the park. But you know what? At least we are lucky we can still hear the birds. So this way you've practiced some language. You've exchanged language by means of a simple picture. And I know these are activities we normally do. WhatsApp is flooded with pictures, photos. Maybe what we need to think more about is the language we use to talk about those pictures. If you're using a lot of Kannada, it's fine. Maybe slowly introduce a little, little, little more English in your WhatsApp chats because WhatsApp is very popular, right? We all you constantly use WhatsApp these days. 
Similarly, you can do that with the next picture as well. Uh, you could describe a lesson or a recent experience when you get together with a friend. So one person describes an experience and the other one replies with questions asking for more information. That's how you communicate better. That's how you can take it to the next step. How can you practice with a group of colleagues? There is Zoom. There are other video conferencing softwares available to meet with your colleagues and practice English. So here are some ideas and you can choose pick and choose from this. You could have a show and tell meeting. You could play a just a minute game. You could debate on a topic and discuss. You could share a successful recipe. People who are interested in cooking or in the lockdown, if you've developed an interest for cooking, you can share your recipe ideas with your friends or your colleagues. You could share lesson ideas and you could discuss how to deal with different teaching situations. So these are all simple things you could do. Meet up online and pick and choose any of these. You could have a weekly meeting and you could do one of these activities every week. So basically, I'm just going to quickly summarize whatever we looked at throughout the session because we also had a, you know, we had an internet issue in between. So we the session was divided into two parts, awareness and practice. So in awareness, we said you listen widely, listen to different accents, listen to different types of audio. So that way, you know, you're building your repertoire, you're building your uh, exposure to the language. You notice aspects of pronunciation every time you're listening to someone. See how the person's speaking. What are the different way, aspects of pronunciation that are going on in this talk? Notice aspects of formal and neutral informal language. So which words in, in a friend's setting? What are the kind of words which are used in a in a political setting? What are the kinds of words which are used in a formal office setting? What are the kinds of words that are used? Compare a written news article with a presenter talking about the topic. What is the difference in sentence structure? Is there a difference? Is there no difference? So compare every time you're looking at a piece of language. Think about out all this in your mind and on the practice section of the webinar we looked at how you could looked at activities where you could practice on your own we looked at uh, activities where you could practice with a friend using whatsapp recordings you could make up games notice each other's areas for improvements and give feedback and you could also practice with a group of friends or colleagues all these are fun ways to practice language so very quickly, what will you do? Think of all the activities and resources you heard about today. Decide on three or four actions that you will do each week. For example, we've given you some examples to start you get you started also. My colleague Lakshmi and I will practice classroom instructions on WhatsApp on Tuesdays and have a conversation based on photographs on Thursdays. I will listen to the BBC one minute news every day when I first log into my computer and make notes on each story. I will download the British Council podcast series and listen to one episode every Monday and Friday. So if you notice, these people have shared their uh, action plans for the future. But it's very, very specific. They've even said on which day they will do what. So do you want to take a minute and write in the chat box? What will you do after today's session? What have you? What is your key takeaway from today's session? Uh, anu, am I still audible? Yes, you are. I'm just waiting for um, okay. um, no problem. I can repeat up. my question also and yeah, yeah, let them take their time. I'll repeat my question. Uh, I'd like you to think about today's session. And I'll pull up this previous slide for you if you wish. Uh, which is the summary slide. This is all yeah. what we looked at. OK, Sorry, so we have a 
response. We have a response from uh, Mr. Rafiq Mujawar. Uh, he says okay. BBC learning app. I often listen to good English speakers on YouTube, TED talk and speakers. So I think he was responding to the previous um, uh, one, but the chat just came up. I thought I should just let you know. Sure, sure. That's lovely. Thank you. sir. thanks for sharing this with us. So can you think of what are your what are going to be your next steps? What is your action plan after today's session? I've shared four examples on the screen for you. To refer to. We have one response um, uh, says reading books. I think uh, they go this in increase reading books. Lovely. OK, so reading, of course, is a great, great, great idea and it, it oh, never does any harm to anyone. Wonderful hobby. So please continue reading. Maybe alongside reading, uh, a good practice will also be to listen to some language. Because reading is, of course, they, it's great. You're reading, but you know, listening helps in many other ways. You're able to listen to accents. You're exposed more to pronunciation. You're exposed more to uh, different kinds of speakers in different contexts. So it will help even more if you can have some kind of listening activities alongside reading. Okay. Uh, yeah, we have one person who mentions that they would listen to English news. That way they can learn exact pronunciation. Priya, can you hear me? Yeah. Other response? Uh, listen to AI news. Also, we see uh, that in English with colleagues. Searching English speech, speeches in YouTube. Um, you getting the answers right? Sorry, I know I couldn't hear you. Could you please repeat what you said? Okay. So, so uh, so note, uh, saying that um, uh, this to the AIR news. Uh, then there was uh, listening to cricket commentary and me. Ah, lovely cricket commentary. Is that what I heard? Yeah, great, 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 great See? cricket commentary. Uh, hopefully, yeah, yeah, very good. I think. Yeah, so that's a great thing to do. Cricket commentary, football commentary. Yeah. Um, I've been listening to English news channels every day at least for 15 minutes. Brilliant, brilliant. That's a great start. Um, yeah, very, very good. Maybe uh, what you could also do as an addition. Sorry. Anand Patil has said he'll watch TED Talks. OK, so you listen to TED Talks also. Wonderful. You can watch and listen to TED Talks. Uh, very, very good topics up there. Uh, you can pick and choose something based on your interest as well. So yeah, great, great idea. TED Talks is great. Uh, do we have any questions? Anu? We're, uh, we're done with the session and I can open the floor to questions now. Yeah, I think you should move on to the question answer uh, um, slide and uh, um, uh, teachers, if you would like to ask questions, I have some questions to start you off with Priya. Sure, sure. So uh, initially we had, um, um, I mean, how to uh, improve fluency. So uh, I think you've already given quite a lot of tips on that, but a little bit more on how to improve fluency. Certainly, certainly. So in addition to what we've already shared in the webinar today, which all obviously has a lot of ideas on improving fluency, um, I think practice and use is the key here. You need to use the language. You need to practice the language. 
as much as you can at every available opportunity and you need to be surrounded by the language. So that's why we're saying listen more to different types of speakers, to different content. It could be news. News is different. Commentary is different. So these are all uh, different options. Recipes. When you look at a cookery show, when you watch a cookery show, the language used there is different. So expose yourself. I would say three things. Listen to more of the language that you need practice with. Speak it and practice it. And at every available opportunity, don't worry about the mistakes you're making. Practice speaking to someone. If you have someone at home, great. Otherwise, catch hold of a friend. 15 minutes every day is enough. Speak, speak the language. That's how you can be more fluent. And I think it's also kind of related to your confidence, your fluency. So the more you, the more confident you get at speaking the language, the more fluent you will be automatically. Okay. I Thanks. hope that answers the question. Thanks, Priya. Uh, I'm just um, I'm just seeing if there are any more new questions. Uh, please sure. type in your questions in the chat box. Um, the question, there were some questions that came in earlier. Uh, one was how to help students learn English. Um, I mean, it's a very broad question, but uh, maybe you could focus on improving mm -hmm. confidence um, of learning English in the sure. classroom. And things. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. Sure, Ranu. Thank you. Thanks for streaming that down to one specific thing. Uh, it, it is indeed a very broad area. And uh, tomorrow, my colleague Rebecca will cover something about developing your students' communication skills. This session was mainly for tips to improve your spoken English, but I'll still give you a couple of uh, uh, pointers for your question. Uh, I think when you're talking about st improving students flu uh, communication or students language, it's very important in the classroom to give them opportunities to speak. Uh, many a times what happens in a teacher centered classroom is the teacher is doing all the talking and it's hardly about fi last five minutes of the class where the student is allowed to talk. That shouldn't be the case. Try to keep your students engaged throughout the session, throughout your lesson. Give them opportunities to talk, to share. And I think now that we're in an online setting, very important to uh, give them an opportunity to, uh, I mean, acknowledge their responses. Not only give them an opportunity to talk, but to acknowledge their responses because they need to feel valued in the classroom. So they need to be happy about the teacher noticing what they're saying for them to make another attempt to speak at all. OK, so uh, with your low level ones, give them the time to open up and give them the time to speak in their own language as well as paraphrase that into English. Maybe that could be a task. You say that every time you speak in Canada or every time you speak in your home language, you will have the additional responsibility of translating it or paraphrasing it into English for the others. That could be a rule in your class. I hope that answers the question, Anu. Yes. So, yes. So, uh, I mean, I'm going back to fluency because one teacher has asked, do you have, I'm just sure, reading it as, sure. do you have any tips? Sorry, I can't hear you. It must be my network. I can't hear you. Can you hear Priya? Oh, if you can repeat that. Sorry, uh, could you? I can hear you now, Anu. I'm sorry, I missed that question. Uh, it's on fluency. Uh, some tips on uh, improving fluency. Um, uh, sure. Also, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, so I I already shared some tips. Yeah, you could, could answer that. Then I'll go. This 
okay um i again anu i i it's my internet probably i have lost i lost the second bit of the question but i heard tips on fluency so i'm going to repeat the tips that i already shared yes uh, uh so the tips on fluency like i said before was to three steps basically listen to the language that you want to learn as much as you can at any opportunity it could be news it could be so basically surround yourself with that language at any available opportunity uh again speak the language practice the language and speak in that language at any available opportunity it could be at home when you're speaking to someone uh, you could find a brother sister child uh, anybody your husband your wife your sis uh, your neighbor anybody who is fluent in that language and practice with them or it could be a mobile application that you speak into and record yourself and listen to it and improve yourself it could be a friend who you decide to talk to every day 15 minutes a day and whatever you talk start talking you it could be simple sentences that you talk about talk with in the uh, beginning and then you can gradually improve uh, to kind of make it more complex and improve the language levels but uh, listen as much as you can so surround yourself with that language and speak practice and speak these would be tips to him. and don't worry about mistakes the most important thing uh, thanks priya uh, priya there is a question from banishankari ks uh, sure. which is a problem that we all face uh, as uh, as our mother tongues are different uh, mm -hmm. so she says when i speak english my mother tongue uh, kannada influences it and make the sound a uh. how to overcome this problem Uh, related sure. to that they say how to control our mother mother tongue um, i mean how do you i mean always mother is an influence of the mother tongue in using english right so how to manage that okay um first of all uh, of course other than very uh, strong influences if there's a slight influence of your mother tongue i would say it is absolutely okay i mean many a times when i speak people are able to tell that i'm a south indian because of the way i my accent is or maybe the way my voice rises and falls which is very similar to uh, a south indian speaking but uh, having said that i do understand where uh, this teacher is coming from when it is a little strong influence you become really conscious and you don't want that in your language um, there are many pronunciation apps uh, available online the british council website itself has a lot of tips on improving your pronunciation uh so you listen to the right way it is said maybe a word or an entire sentence play it back listen to it a couple of times and then speak back into the application it allows you to record and it plays it back for you so you know exactly where you are you need to improve or what are the areas that you need to improve you know and like i said pronunciation is a whole it's a big 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 area we could do like a 3 4 day session on pronunciation so uh, some of the resources are available online and uh, more resources will be shared on friday when there's a session on using resources and kind of picking and selecting resources for english so lot of apps available even on mobile phones if you go into your play store very good pronunciation apps available so please make use of that record yourself uh, if if there are courses if there are um, mooks on pronunciation future learn has many mooks uh, which you could enroll for you could uh, participate in these online courses which develop your pronunciation as well thanks thanks priya uh, we we are about 1 minute to close sure. the session so just last question uh, from farhanas how to create an english environment in schools brilliant lovely question this is something we have all struggled with and some of us still do so uh, i think very importantly make it very natural right from uh, the time they've enrolled in the school don't kind of impose it on them let it come naturally to them uh, what works one thing that has worked for me and i'm sharing that with you is uh, having a classroom agreement right at the beginning of the year before you start your lessons agreeing with your students that okay this is what is accepted in the classroom this is what is not accepted in the classroom and let it come from them so in an english class it's a good idea to kind of make it 
I wouldn't, I, I don't like the word a rule, but I would say have an agreement with your students that you need to use English and kind of tell them the benefits of using it. So till you don't see value in what you're doing, I don't think even students want to do it. So make your students find value in speaking English. What will they gain if they speak English? What will they lose out if they don't speak in English? So maybe, you know, future job opportunities, better education opportunities, higher education, access to all of this. So kind of give them those, uh, big, give, show them the larger picture. Make it, uh, make it easy for them to speak. Don't kind of penalize them if they don't speak. Find out why they're not speaking and have a lot of interesting activities where they're forced to speak. So make your classes so interesting that they want to be there and they want to speak. They're kind of fighting to speak. Uh, does that answer the question, Anu? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you so before much. Before we close, any yeah. uh, last comments? Last comments from you? Uh, any last thoughts from you? And we can end, end the sure, session. Sure, sure. Uh, I think just just one thing, uh, do not be afraid of making any mistakes. Uh, when we start off, we're all in that in the same boat. You know, we're always worried that what if I say something wrong? What if I what if someone laughs at me? The key to learning any language, I'm not only talking about English here. It could be any language is to get out of your shell and forget uh, you know, get away from the fear of speaking in that language. Get away from the fear of making mistakes. Just say it, just speak. Somebody will correct you, you will learn. Otherwise, you will never be able to learn. So surround yourself with the language and speak the language. And it was wonderful interacting with this lovely bunch of teachers here. Uh, and for, I'm really sorry again once more for the uh, technical glitch in between. But uh, I still hope you were able to gain something from this session. And tomorrow's session uh, by my colleague Rebecca will focus on uh, communication for your students. So how can you improve their communication in English? So very interesting session. Many of your questions today will be answered even better tomorrow. And thank you so much for the support, Anu and Haima. Thank you. Thank you, teachers. And we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Uh, same time, three o'clock. We will be live again uh, with a, with another topic for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.